Hindu Astrology Jyotisha is the traditional Hindu system of astrology, also known as Hindu astrology, Indian astrology, and more recently, Vedic astrology. The term Hindu astrology has been in use as the English equivalent of Jyotisha since the early 19th century, whereas Vedic astrology is a relatively recent term, entering common usage in the 1980s with self-help publications on Ayurveda or Yoga. Vedanga Jyotisha is one of the earliest texts about astronomy within the Vedas. However, some authors have claimed that the horoscopic astrology in the Indian subcontinent came from Hellenistic influences, postdating the Vedic period. In epics Ramayana and Mahabharata, only electional astrology, omens, dreams, and physiognomy are used. Following a judgment of the Andhra Pradesh High Court in 2001, which favored astrology, some Indian universities offer advanced degrees in Hindu astrology. Astrology is rejected by the scientific community as a pseudoscience. History Jyotisha is one of the Vedanga, the six auxiliary disciplines used to support Vedic rituals. Early Jyotisha is concerned with the preparation of a calendar to fix the date of sacrificial rituals. Nothing is written on planets. There are mention of eclipse causing demons in the Artharva Veda and Chadyoga Upanishad, the Chadyoga mentioning Rahu. In fact, the term Graha, which is now taken to mean planet, originally meant demon. The Rig Veda also mentions an eclipse causing demon, Svarbanu. However, the specific term of Graha becomes applied to Svarbanu in the later Mahabharata and Ramayana. The foundation of Hindu astrology is the notion of Bandhu of the Vedas, or scriptures, which is the connection between the microcosm and the macrocosm. Practice relies primarily on the sidereal zodiac, which is different from the tropical zodiac used in Western or Hellenistic astrology, as in the Ayanapsa, adjustment is made for the gradual procession of the vernal equinox. Hindu astrology includes several nuanced subsystems of interpretation and prediction with elements not found in Hellenistic astrology, such as its system of lunar mansions or nakshatras. It was only after the transmission of Hellenistic astrology that the order of planets in India was fixed in that of the seven-day week. Hellenistic astrology and astronomy also transmitted the twelve zodiacal signs, beginning with Aries, and the twelve astrological places, beginning with the Ascendant. The first evidence of the introduction of Greek astrology to India is the Yanavada Jataka, which dates to the early century CE. The Yavana Jataka, sayings of the Greeks, was translated from Greek to Sanskrit by Yavana Svara during the 2nd century CE, under the patronage of the western satrap Saka, King Rudradaman I, and is considered the first Indian astrological treatise in the Sanskrit language. However, the only version that survives is the later verse version of Spudijvaja, which dates to AD 270. The first Indian astronomical text to define the weekday was the Aryabhatiya. According to Michio Yano, Indian astronomers must have been occupied with the task of Indianizing and Sanskritizing Greek astronomy during the 300 years or so between the Yavana Jataka and the Aryabhatiya. The astronomical texts of these 300 years are lost. The later Pankasitakiya, or Varahamahira, summarizes the five known Indian astronomical schools of the 6th century. It is interesting to note that Indian astronomy preserved some of the older pre-Ptolemaic elements of Greek astronomy. The main texts upon which classical Indian astrology is based are early medieval compilations, notably the Barhat Parasara, Horashatstra, and Sarasvali by Kalayanavara. The Horashatstra is a composite work of 71 chapters, 
of which the first part, chapters 1 to 51, dates to the 7th to early 8th centuries, and the second part, chapters 52 to 71, to the later 8th century. The Saravali, likewise, dates to around 800 CE. English translations of these texts were published by N. N. Krishna Rao and V. B. Chudari in 1963 and 1961, respectively. Modern Hindu Astrology Astrology remains an important facet in the lives of many Hindus. In Hindu culture, newborns are traditionally named based on their Jyotisha charts, and astrological concepts are pervasive in the organization of the calendar and holidays, as well as in many areas of life, such as in making decisions about marriage, opening a new business, and moving into a new home. Astrology retains a position among the sciences in modern India. Following a judgment by the Andhra Pradesh High Court in 2001, some Indian universities offer advanced degrees in astrology. The decision was upheld by the Supreme Court of India in 2004. Astrology remains an important facet of Hindu folk belief in contemporary India. Many Hindus believe that heavenly bodies, including the planets, have an influence throughout the life of a human being, and these planetary influences are the fruit of karma. The Navagraha, planetary deities, are considered subordinate to Ishvara, that is the supreme being, in the administration of justice. Thus these planets can influence early life. <clears throat> Status of Astrology the University Grants Commission and the Ministry of Human Resource Development of the Government decided to introduce Jyotir Vigyan, or Vedic Astrology, as a discipline of study in Indian universities, saying that Vedic Astrology is not only one of the main subjects of our traditional and classical knowledge, but this is the discipline which lets us know the events happening in human life and in universe on time scale. The decision was backed up by the Andhra Pradesh High Court, despite widespread protests from the scientific community in India and Indian scientists working abroad. A petition sent to the Supreme Court of India stated that the introduction of astrology to university curricula is a giant leap backwards, undermining whatever scientific credibility the country has achieved so far. But it refused to intervene in the matter. In 2004, the Supreme Court dismissed a further petition, concluding that the teaching of astrology did not qualify as the promotion of religion. In February 2011, the Bombay High Court referred to the 2004 Supreme Court ruling when it dismissed a case which had challenged astrology's status as a science. Despite continuing complaints by scientists, astrology is still, as of 2014, taught at various universities in India, and there is a movement in progress to establish a national Vedic university to teach astrology together with the study of Tantra, Mantra, and Yoga. Elements There are 16 Varga, or divisional charts, used in Hindu astrology. Rasi, Zodiacal Signs Around 2500 BC, many extant texts were written by sages such as Agastya and Brigu. Each sign was divided into three strata called Charna, similar to the deaconates of Western astrology. The Narayana, or sidereal zodiac, is an imaginary belt of 360 degrees, which, like the Cyana, or tropical zodiac, is divided into 12 equal parts. Each twelfth part is called a sign, or rasi. Vedic and Western zodiacs differ in the method of measurement. While synchronically the two systems are identical, Jyotisha uses primarily the sidereal zodiac, in which stars are counted to be the fixed background against which the motion of the planets is measured, whereas most Western astrology uses the tropical zodiac. The motion of the planets is measured against the position of the sun on the spring equinox. The difference becomes noticeable over time. After two millennia, as a result of the precession of the equinoxes, the origin of the ecliptic longitude has shifted by about 22 degrees. As a result, 
The placement of the planets in the Jyotisha system is consistent with the actual zodiac, while in Western astrology the planets fall into the following sign, as compared to their placement in the sidereal zodiac, about two-thirds of the time. Nakshatras, Lunar Mansions a nakshatra or lunar mansion is one of the 27 divisions of the sky, identified by the prominent stars in them used in Hindu astrology. Historical, medieval Hindu astrology enumerated either 27 or 28 nakshatras. Today, a rigid system of 27 nakshatras, covering 13 degrees 20 minutes of the ecliptic each, is generally used. The missing 28th nakshatra is a pidget. Each nakshatra is divided into quarters, or padas, of 3 degrees 20 minutes. Of the greatest importance is the Abhisheka nakshatra, which is the king amongst all the nakshatras, and worshipping and propitiating this nakshatra has the power to remedy all the other nakshatras. Remedial measures are, in general, the high watermark of all realistic predictive astrology work and go a long way in mitigating karma. Dashas, planetary periods. The word dasha means state of being, and therefore a dasha governs to a large extent the state of being of a person. The dasha system shows which planets may be said to have become particularly active during the period of the dasha. The ruling planet, the dashanatha, eclipses the mind of the native, compelling him or her to act as per the nature of the planet. There are several dasha systems, each with its own utility and area of application. There are dashas of grahas, as well as dashas of rashis. The primary system used by astrologers is the Vimsotari dasha system, which has been considered universally applicable in the Kali Yuga to all horoscopes. The first maha dasha is determined by the position of the natal moon in a given nakshatra. The lord of the nakshatra governs the dasha. Each maha dasha is divided into subperiods called buktis, or antar dashas, which are proportional divisions to the maha dasha. Further proportional subdivisions can be made, but error margin based on accuracy of the birth time grows exponentially. The next subdivision is called pratanyar dasha, which can in turn be divided into sukshma antara dasha which can in turn be divided into Praana Antardasha, which can be subdivided into Deha Antardasha. Such subdivisions also exist in all other Dasha systems, some of which have been named above. Grahas, Planets Nine Grahas are used, from Graha. The nine planets of Vedic astrology, or Jyotisha, are the forces that capture or eclipse the mind and the decision-making of the human being, thus the term Graha. When the Grahas are active in their Dashas, the periodicities they are particularly empowered to direct the affairs of the person or the inanimate being, as the case may be. Even otherwise, Grahas are always busy capturing us in some way or other, for better or for worse. Gocharas, transits. The natal chart shows the position of the grahas at the moment of birth. Since that moment, the grahas have continued to move around the zodiac, interacting with the natal chart grahas. This period of interaction is called gochara. The study of transits is based not only on the transit of the moon, Kandra, which spans roughly two days, but also the movement of the slightly faster planets such as Mercury, Buddha, and Venus, Sukra. The movement, the movement of the slower planets Guru, Shani, and Rahu Ketu is always of considerable importance. Astrologers must study the transit of the Dasha Lord and must also study transits from various reference points in the horoscope. Yogas, Planetary Combinations Yoga is a com combination of planets placed in a specific relationship to each other. It is usually advisable to study the underlying theme behind the yogas rather than attempt to memorize them. 
Raja yogas are givers of fame, status, and authority, and are formed typically by the association of the Lord of Kendras, quadrants, when reckoned from the Langna, ascendant, and the Lords of the Trunkna, trines. The Raja yogas are culminations of the blessings of Vishnu and Lakshmi. Some planets, such as Mars for Leo Lagna, do not need another graha to recreate Raja Yoga, but are capable of giving Raja Yoga suomoto due to their own lordship of the fourth bhava and the ninth bhava from the Lagna, the two being Kendra and Trokna bhava respectively. Dana Yogas are formed by the association of wealth-giving planets such as Dinesha, or the second lord, and the Labesha, or the eleventh lord, from the Lagna. Dana yogas also formed due to the auspicious placement of the Dharapada, when reckoned from the Ardula Langa. The combination of the Langnesha and the Bhagyesha also leads to wealth through the Lakshmi Yoga. Samyasa yogas are formed due to the placement of four or more grahas, excluding the sun, in a Kendra Brava from the Langna. There are some overarching yogas in Jyotisha, such as Amavasya Dosha, Kala Sarpa, Yoga Kala, Amarta Yoga, and Graha Malika Yoga, that can take precedence over Yamaha Yoga planetary placements in the horoscope. The Hindu bhavas, houses, the Hindu jataka, or birth chart, is the bhava chakra, the complete 360-degree circle of life, divided into houses, and represents our way of enacting the influences in the wheel. Each house has associated karaka, planets that can alter the interpretation of a particular house. Each bhava spans an arc of 30 degrees, and therefore there are 12 bhavas in any chart of the horoscope. These are a crucial part of any horoscopic study, since the bhavas, understood as state of being, personalize the rashis to the native, and each rashi apart from indicating its true nature reveals its impact on the person based on the bhava occupied. The best way to study the various facets of Jyotisha is to see their role in chart evaluation or actual, of actual persons and how these are construed. Drishtis, Aspects Drishti is an aspect to an entire house. Grahas can only forward aspects, with the furthest aspect being considered the strongest. For example, Mars aspects the 4th, 7th, and 8th houses from its position, and its 8th house aspect is considered more powerful than its 7th aspect, which is in turn more powerful than its 4th aspect. The principle of Dristi, aspect, was devised on the basis of the aspects of an army of planets as deity and demon in a war field. Thus the sun, a deity king with only one full aspect, is more powerful than the demon king Saturn, which has three full aspects. Aspects can be cast both by the planets and by the signs. Planetary aspects are a function of desire, while sign aspects are a function of awareness and cognizance. There are some higher aspects of Graha Drishti, planetary aspects, that are not limited to the Vishesa Drishti, or the special aspects. Rashi Dishtri works based on the following formulaic structure. All movable signs aspect fixed signs except the one adjacent, and all dual and mutable signs aspect each other without exception. <laughs>